I'll go straight into tonight's uh, topic, which is the principles of, uh, for achieving um, excellence. And this is a uh, quote by Aristotle, where he says that uh, we are what we do repeatedly. And the excellence, therefore, is not an act, but it is a habit. And there are some important connections with the, the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi In fact, the ritual program of worship, worship that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has given us to habitualize uh, these good behavior points. And then we have uh, Stephen Covey and his take on excellence when he said that real excellence does not come cheaply. A certain price must be paid in terms of practice, patience, and persistence. So he uses the three P, P words. Um, and natural ability notwithstanding. <coughs> and then obviously the best words, Kalamullah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that uh, He is the one who created death and life. And Allah gives us an insight as to the purpose for which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did this, which, we, which was to test who of us is best indeed. So that is the challenge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sets for us to compete for excellence, to strive hard, uh, to outdo and, and gain this recognition from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then next best after the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the words of the perfect human being, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he said, in Allah azza wa jal muhsin, yuhibbul ihsan. Allah said, verily Allah is the exalted, is excellent, and he loves excellence. So this is something that should motivate us if we want to be loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is strive for excellence. Because that's something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do. And in the second hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, in Allah katab al ihsana ala kulli shay. Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed excellence in everything. So everything that we do, we should try to do it at the best possible level, to the best of our abilities. And in another hadith, a weak hadith that is often uh, cited, in Allah yuhibbu idha amila ahadukum amala ayyutqina. The Prophet sallallahu said, Allah loves to see his servant who does a, a job meticulously. So we don't, we don't just settle for getting things done haphazardly, chaotically. We strive to do things uh, with excellence, inshaAllah. And then there's the example of uh, another hadith that was taught to a young seven-year-old. Muhammad al-Fatih, he was taught by his teacher this hadith where the Prophet wasallam said, surely Constantinople, which is now called Istanbul, will be opened. And how blessed the commander who will open it and how blessed his army. So Muhammad al-Fatih asked his teacher, has it already been opened? He's only seven years old. He doesn't really know what's happening around him. But you can see that he was keen to find out, has, has anybody conquered or opened up Constantinople? And his teacher said to him, no. So he said to his teacher, well, can I be that person? So he asked his teacher, can I be that one? Can I be that person that the Prophet ﷺ is talking about? And his teacher said to him, yes, most definitely you can. And he went away from that lesson, telling his friends, bragging to them and boasting to them that I'm going to be the one to open uh, Constantinople. And with that determination and inspiration, striving for excellence, guess what? At the age of 21, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with that. And he was blessed to be that person that the Prophet Sallallahu referred to. Now how do we relate, relate all of that nice theory? So it looks good in theory, right? These beautiful principles and messages and values. But where's the state of the Ummah today? Where are we? Locally, nationally, as a country, and globally as an Ummah. Some people have started, uh, started to refer to the, the state of the Muslim nation undergoing, going through its dark ages. Unfortunately, sadly, and we know that we know that reality. It's a sad reality and we, we can't turn a blind eye to it Our situation is not the best and there's a lot of hard work that we need to do uh, But I think until we get to grips with this reality We can use all these principles striving for excellence to rectify and change and turn things around inshallah And that's why we are here tonight inshallah uh, with our special guest Sheikh Yahya Ibrahim who has uh, given us generously of his time just a quick introduction uh, about Sheikh Yahya. He's an educator and Muslim chaplain living in Perth. And he describes himself as Canadian by birth, Egyptian through ancestry, Turkish by marriage, and Australian by residence. So he's a global, uh, a global individual, multi multifaceted, alhamdulillah. And that's how we, we, we should be, global citizens. 
Uh, he's a registered teacher serving the Muslim community of Curtin University, teaches internationally with the uh, Al-Kothar Institute. He just came back from a two-week tour of Malaysia. Uh, began memorizing the Quran at the young age of 16, completed 20 months later, receiving an ijazah in proficiency and instruction to teach. So we are really privileged to have Sheikh Yahya with us tonight and sh share with us his valuable insights and thoughts about this important topic, the principles of achieving excellence. Jazakallah.